South Africa's electricity woes may be easing with a significant reduction in load shedding compared to last year. This positive development is attributed to a complex interplay of factors, including a decline in electricity demand and a growing trend towards alternative energy sources. While unplanned outages have decreased, the good news is tempered by a rise in planned uh, maintenance, keeping overall electricity availability similar to the previous year. However, customers are experiencing relief due to a significant drop in the frequency and intensity of load shedding. From Johannesburg, South Africa, I have Chris Yelland, Managing Director, EE Business Intelligence, and he will be shedding more light on this. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Now, at the moment, unplanned outages are down. Is the overall availability of electricity actually higher this year compared to last year, considering increased planned maintenance? No, well, you see, the, the unplanned breakdowns have noticeably reduced in the first 13 weeks of this year compared to the same period last year. But at the same time, planned outages, uh, that means maintenance, uh, has increased. Now, that's not a bad thing, uh, but it does mean that there's less um, capacity available to meet um, demand. In other words, uh, whilst uh, people are doing maintenance, that generation capacity is not available for service. Uh, and, and the two are offsetting them so each other. So. On the one hand, you have reduced unplanned outages, breakdowns, and on the other hand, you have increased maintenance, both of which are good things. But it means that the availability of, of, of generation plant uh, is roughly constant. It's been about the same as it was for the same period last year. Uh, so people, of course, are asking, well, <clears throat> if the availability is about the same, why are we experiencing significantly reduced intensity and frequency of load shedding? And the answer actually is, if you look at the data, Demand for electricity, and I'm talking here about ESCOM electricity, grid electricity, demand for that electricity has been reducing every year for several years now, and it continues to reduce this year. Uh, and this is driven by a number of different factors. First of all, the very weak economy in South Africa, low growth, uh, high prices of electricity that are rising fast, much higher than the inflation rate, causing customers to install their self-generation. That means rooftop solar PV, battery energy storage, both at domestic, uh, commercial, industrial, mining, agricultural level. Uh, and, and so there's a move away from Eskom grid electricity, which is helping, it's, re it's reducing the burden on the Eskom generators. That means less load shedding. But there are so the factors what? that are causing this. Oh, okay, so Chris, uh, to what extent um, has the frequency and intensity of the load shedding increased compared to the same period last year? And what does the new 16-hour load shedding approved for Eskom, what does it mean? Yeah, so uh, it, people have been a bit concerned that uh, there has been recently a release of the new load shedding protocols. Now, previously, we only went up to stage eight load shedding, um, which means up to 8,000 megawatts uh, being shed at a particular time. Uh, at stage 16 uh, really increases the level of, uh, of potential level of load shedding. Now, one mustn't see this uh, in an alarmist way. Uh, but uh, the point is one has to be prepared even for worst case scenarios. We were pushing stage six load shedding last year. Sometimes even people felt that it was like stage seven or stage eight. Uh, and so the planners felt it necessary to, to even start planning for beyond stage eight. Uh, but that's not to say that it's happening. And in fact, um, the load shedding has reduced uh, this year. But uh, one needs to put in place plans even for in unlikely emergency conditions, and this is what we see is happening. Well, you also talked about um, the reasons for the um, reduction in load shedding uh, that has to do with improved maintenance. You talked about the less demand for power also. So then what about the um, new renewable energy and battery storage plants, which seem to be alternatives that people are also turning into? What contribution do you think that is also having on um, the reduction in load shedding? Yeah, it's making a very significant contribution at a number of different levels. Um, so, for example, uh, last year, in 2023, something like... Hello, Chris. So, it's definitely helping. Yeah, uh, Chris, we didn't quite get to what you said a while ago. Can you please um, just you know, go back on it and let us understand better? Yeah. True. So uh, in the last year, that's 2023, something like 2,000 megawatts of rooftop solar PV and battery energy storage was installed. Now that is relieving load shedding significantly by two stages. 
And it's not just, uh, you know, rooftop uh, solar PV that's coming on. It's also the utility scale, large renewable energy plants, wind, solar, battery energy storage is about the only game in town at the moment. Uh, other options like new coal, uh, gas-fired power, nuclear power, well, some of those will probably never happen, uh, but the point is they're also very long-term solutions. So what we're seeing here is the private sector stepping in uh, and um, looking after itself by building self-generation plant, as well as wheeling of power and trading of power through the electricity grid, using the grid as a transport mechanism for transport electricity from independent power producers to, uh, to uh, off-takers or customers of electricity. Um, so at this point, a lot of people are actually concerned about the state of ESCOM, which is, of course, of course um, a public utility in South Africa. Do you think that this issue or this stage of load shedding uh, in the country would um, speak more to a solution for ESCOM in terms of its operational and financial strength? Or do you think it will further make it redundant? Yeah, look, uh, the restructuring of ESCOM uh, from a vertically integrated monopoly that was set up about a hundred years ago is in progress and it's being driven by poor performance at a financial level, at an operational level and also at an environmental level. And um, I mean Eskom's debt, level of debt is simply unsustainable. Uh, it cannot uh, meet the debt repayments, uh, both capital and interest without very significant shareholder support. That means the government stepping in and bailing out um, uh, the, the, these, um, bailing out ESKIM. So uh, the, the restructuring of ESKIM uh, is really very necessary. But again, this is not a short term fix. It's going to take um, maybe three, four, five years uh, for these reforms to take place. But they are very necessary re reforms in the medium to longer term. Well, you just talked about um, the public utilities um, debt being unsustainable and the need for um, restructuring. But we know that ESCOM's financial struggles um, of late have temporarily been alleviated by the government in terms of bailout and a moratorium on new debt. So how much of debt relief has ESCOM received from government and for how long is the moratorium on new debt expected to last? Yeah, look, at the moment, ESCOM is receiving about $50 billion rands of uh, bailout uh, every year from uh, government. Uh, now, government has uh, put in place very stringent conditionality attached to this uh, to these bailouts, uh, and um, and and one of the one of the conditionalities, for example, is that Eskom must restructure. In other words, it cannot just expect to continue receiving bailouts from government um, on an ongoing basis. It has to look at the underlying issues. And many of the underlying issues are actually structural issues uh, that need to be dealt with. So still talking about the issue around restructuring, now, we have heard of talks um, around unbundling ESCOM and increasing participation from uh, private investors um, in areas of generation, transmission and distribution. Do you think that in a way would help improve ESCOM's operations and put it in a better stead? Yes, I think uh, it is uh, very necessary. That's not to say that ESCOM is going to disappear. Uh, and ESCOM is not being privatized, uh, but the private sector is being encouraged to participate in the electricity sector alongside ESCOM and also to provide the necessary finance, construction skills uh, and the building of new uh, transmission grids uh, as well as generation plant. And really the, the role of the private sector is really important, uh, you know, if ESCOM is going to transition. But as I say, that doesn't mean to say Eskim is dis going to disappear. It will always be a big and important player in this game. Uh, but uh, it, it, we're looking towards a more diversified uh, and, and um, uh, more resilient uh, uh, generation sector that is competitive, that allows not only Eskim generators, but other generators, both uh, you know, public-private partnerships, municipal generators, independent power producers, and even customers of electricity to become part of the solution. Uh, and, and to supplement the electricity needs of the country so that it doesn't all fall on Eskom's shoulders. Mm. Okay, finally, um, Chris, talking about solutions, let's look at it this way. And this is how we are going to end. Now, energy experts say that the success of the ongoing reforms in the um, power sector as it affects Eskom hinges on the passage of the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill. Do you think that would be crucial for the future of the industry and, of course, um, the growth and viability of Eskom? 
you know. So right now, there is a bill that is going through Parliament. It's called the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill. And it really uh, is there to set the legal uh, policy planning framework uh, for an unbundled and a restructured ESCOM. Uh, and um, th this bill has been through Parliament, it's been approved by the National Assembly, is now going through what is known as the National Council of Provinces. Uh, and, uh, and we are reasonably optimistic that in the next few months it will be enacted as law. And it's really important uh, for this uh, bill to become enacted because it does set the legal framework, uh, the planning framework for this restructured industry, which is absolutely vital. Mm. Okay, I'm Chris Yellen, Managing Director, EE Business Intelligence. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you.